What's going on, everybody? What a wild card weekend we just had for 2018. And we're going to jump right into it right now with the Titans and the Chiefs. Now, if you watched this game like I did, um, you probably would have been saying that there's no way that the Chiefs were going to lose this game early on. It was like, you know, 21 to 3. It's like, okay, what's going to happen? Kelsey goes out. We understand what's going on with that. We know that he's a big part of the offense, but there is no excuse. Um, pretty much right now, what, what has to happen with the Chiefs is it's very, very difficult for me to say it. No, it's not difficult. It's not difficult at all. Andy Reid has to be fired, and um, we have to get rid of Alex Smith. Now, you're probably saying, why am I blaming those two individuals? Uh, Andy Reid, for some reason, he's just not able to – I don't – you know, he got the Eagles to the Super Bowl. He's I, – I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he just needs to be a coordinator. I don't know what's going on, but – I have no idea why they, they, they could have just ran the ball with Hunt a lot more. It's, just, it's like it's similar to how the Falcons lost the Super Bowl to the Patriots. You have the lead, right? There is no need for a lot of the play calls that are going on. And I'm going to get to Drew Brees in a second because Drew Brees is Drew Brees. Alex Smith is Alex Smith. You, you can't put – and I know Kelsey being out and he's trying to throw the ball to that other bum tight end that was dropping the ball. I understand all that. But pretty much what happened with this game was – they were riding high to start. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, it's looking good. You know, you had Hill out there doing whatever. Um, everything was rolling. But it really wasn't, though, because the story of this game is Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis is the biggest bum. He is the, a complete shell of himself. Uh, I don't know why he came back. I don't know why the Chiefs signed him. To be realistic, you could have done anything else other than do that and put somebody else there that's a younger guy whatever, whoever, a rookie, somebody off the street, anybody else other than Darrell Rivas. Let me say, let me tell you why, right? Darrell Rivas batted a ball to Mariota, which turned out to be Mariota to Mariota. If that's old school, you know, when he was in his prime, when it was Rivas Island, uh, Darrell Rivas, he would have intercepted that ball. He patted, he patted it like he's playing volleyball, patted it right back to Mariota. Once I saw that happen, I knew they were going to lose. I already knew. I knew the Titans were going to win the game. Because I couldn't believe, first of all, when I saw Darrell Rivas out there, it was, it was hilarious. Because the guy, he can't tackle. He, he can't really move. The guy sucks. He's, look, that was probably his last year in the league. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I can't really go around and beat around the bush. I got to be objective about what's going on. He looked very, very bad, and he has looked bad for a while. I don't know if it's because it's like the midseason. He didn't have time to prepare or whatever, but he sucks. And we got to move on. Like, at some point, when you don't have it anymore, you just don't have it anymore. It's like people are waiting for Tom Brady to fall off a cliff, but Tom Brady is proving that he's not going to right now. Darrell Rivas has fell off the cliff, exploded, like all kinds of stuff happened. You know, like any kind of movie you watch when the car goes over and then it's just sitting there for a little bit and it blows up. And then after that, the, the, the police come, like all that stuff. It's when, all, when only the debris is left. That's what Darrell Rivas is right now. That guy is terrible. And that was pretty much the game. Um, Mariota made, made that key block at the end of the game to get the first down for Derrick Henry. And he just balled out, man. But at the end of the day, the Chiefs really choked, and they suck. I'm just going to be honest with you, bro. I, I can't continue to talk about that. They're making my stomach hurt. The Falcons and the Rams. The Rams are a complete disappointment. But at the end of the day, I don't know why the Rams were favored anyway. If you really look at it, why would you favor a team that has no playoff experience and has a quarterback that's coming You know, he's pretty – you know, he's, he's green. He's new. And you got Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Sanu, Freeman – Coleman, all these other goons. You got uh, True Font back at a corner for the Falcons. I, you know, like you, you have to know they're gonna lose the game. I, I don't really understand. Like, I thought the Rams had a chance to win, but then when I thought about it, when I was looking on the field and I saw, I looked into Julio Jones' eyes when he was looking into the camera. I was like, okay, dude, this is not gonna go well. And it showed the lack of experience. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. They're like, yeah, it has nothing to do with that. It really does, though. When you do something for the first time, it's not like everybody's going to be their best. And that's what we were able to see, that the Rams were just not – they weren't ready for this moment. That doesn't mean that they're, you know, a bad team and they're a watch. That does mean – Todd Gurley is definitely not going to win the MVP. I think the voting has already been done, but Tom Brady will most likely win it. Um, you know, Gurley tried to, you know, get better, get you know, try to move the ball a little bit more in the second half. He had over 100 yards, stuff like that. But it was all stuff that didn't really matter because the whole game plan of the Falcons – was let Jared Goff beat me, and they did it. Jared Goff couldn't do it, and it's as simple as that. It was something that he couldn't do, so the Falcons move on, and we're going to see what happens next week, but we'll get to that with the predictions in a second. 
jumping into the Bills and the Jaguars. Now, the Bills had a chance to get seven points. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, for some reason, throws a fade route to Calvin Benjamin. It's an offensive pass interference because Jalen Ramsey is not a clown. Jalen Ramsey is a stud. I don't know why for the life of me. First of all, Calvin Benjamin is running around doing interviews talking trash because he's bigger than Jalen Ramsey. But being bigger with the height, you got to understand a lot of these wide receivers, you, since Brandon Browner at 6'4", and maybe like a Richard Sherman, I don't really see a lot of big, big corners. You know what I'm saying? So people think that because the receiver is so much bigger, you go, you have to, you go back to like Plaxico Barrett, Burris when the Giants won the Super Bowl. Everybody remembers that fade. And you think it could be just be done like that. These corners that are decent corners are very, very strong and grounded. And Jalen Ramsey, what is he, like 6'1"? He, he, he's not like a little fluky dude, bro. You're not going to disrespect that young man. And that's what we saw. We saw a man that in Jalen Ramsey that was able to play his position and know where to be. And Kelvin Benjamin had no choice but to extend his arms because he wasn't giving him any space. I don't know why they chose that play call when the only real weakness of the Jaguars' defense is in the middle. Why wouldn't you just run the ball three, four, like whatever, three, four times? Why would you do that? I, I don't understand. You see, that's the thing about it. When you when you get into these games like this, you I don't really understand what these coaches are thinking about. And then when they get fired, everybody, what, yo, you can't fire them so fast. Yes, you can, because they're stupid. Who is responsible for that? I'm, you know, like they were, they were trying to assess, like, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a, a run pass option. You can't do a run pass option. That has to be run. You have to run that ball. You can't do anything else other than that. That takes, that's four points lost. Cause now you got to take a field goal. Like, you know, this is a defensive game. Like, I don't know what this is about. And then we could get to Blake Bortles. He's the worst quarterback ever since Osweiler last year when they were playing the Patriots, when he was with the, with the Texans. The biggest downfall for the Jags is Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles is a bum. So we have to understand, like, look, listen, going forward, they're going to go see the Steelers. I'm going to get to my predictions in a second. But you knew the only way you were going to lose this game is if you made a foolish play when you had a chance to score. And that's what the Bills did. It wasn't like it was a, a, a run through. The Bills came out and played great defense. They had a decent offensive scheme. LaShawn McCoy looked good, all that good stuff. They couldn't pull it out. And, that, and I go back to that fade play. I go back to the, why are you running a fade on, the, on arguably the best corner in the league? That's dumb. That doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. Run the ball up the middle. Morons. Panthers and the Saints. Look, they made it. Look, th this comes down to the fact that Drew Brees and the Saints look like they're ready for the Super Bowl. When I tell you that this man was throwing dots all over, you, bro, oh my goodness. Drew Brees, man. This is why I picked the Saints, okay? I picked the Saints because I think Drew Brees is the best quarterback in the NFC, and he proved it. He's throwing 60-yard dots to Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn was actually catching the ball. I didn't know what – listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. The Panthers have gotten rid of a lot of players that have hurt Cam Newton, and this is not all on Cam Newton. This is on the management. You get rid of Josh Norman. You get rid of Ted Ginn. You get – Benjamin probably would have helped out a little bit in this game. I don't know. But – who he's throwing a Funches. Like, bro, Funches? Like, who is that? I look, let me tell you something right now. I don't know what if they're conspiring to ruin Cam Newton. I have no idea what they're doing. But you gotta give the man something to work with, bro. You can't give this guy, you know, or, the, he's playing with a bunch of bums. He has no receivers to throw the ball to. And they oh yeah, can't no, I'm not this can't this is not all on Cam. Cam played very, very well. But if dudes are going to drop the ball, that other dude, number 12, with the, you know, the touchdown uh, on the left side of the field, that out route was beautiful. He drops it. He don't have people that's going to catch the ball. This is not on Cam. And you guys know I'm a very, very hard Cam critic. This loss is not on Cam Newton. They could have eat, they, This could have been a more competitive game. The Panthers could have possibly won this game if he had a receiving core. I just think they're trying to sabotage Cam Newton, man. They're getting rid of everybody. All his deep threats are gone. He has nothing going on. Is nothing going on right now. It was very, very ridiculous on his side, but the Saints balled out, man, and they pulled it out. Obviously, you know, they had the last the last second chance to score. Didn't work out for the Panthers. The Saints move on, and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I can't blame Cam Newton for that, man, and I know neither can you guys. It, uh, uh, if you're, not, you're not being fair if you, if you blame Cam Newton for that loss. You're just, you're just not being fair. His receiving core absolutely sucked. Now, moving on to the divisional round. 
we're looking at the fact that we have the Falcons at the Eagles. Now, before I make my pick, you got to understand something. I don't think Matt Ryan is the best quarterback. I absolutely don't. I think that he's he, he's a normal guy. You know what I'm saying? Running around here to MVP season last year. He showed this year that he's not really that um, that high-level Drew Brees. Like, he, he's not that guy, bro. He's going to do wild things. You know what I'm saying? But, but, you're going up against Nick Foles. You see what I'm saying? Nick Foles is a bum. But let me tell you how the Eagles can probably win this game. Because everybody thinks, oh, yeah, the Falcons are going to beat the Eagles. I think I'm going with the Eagles. Let me explain. They got a two-headed monster with Blunt and that other guy, right? They just came from Miami, Ajayi, right? They're going to do what they have to do to keep the ball out of Foles' hands. But Foles still can make good throws when needed. They're, he's not going to be throwing the ball like 40, 50 times. They're going to have a different scheme that's going to help them to win this game. I'm not – I don't – listen, I know Julio Jones is on the other side. I already know that. I'm not worried about Julio Jones. What I'm worried about is how the Eagles are going to play Julio Jones. But even if they even if they go one-on-one, -on -one, whatever they do, right, it won't really matter. Because if you look at Julio Jones statistically, he's not really hurting you in the red zone. He's, he's getting big chunk plays, but that's all he's really doing. He's not really – I was looking at those percentages. I was very, very shocked to see that he's not very – he's not highly used in the red zone. And I think that that's where it's going to hurt the Falcons. I got to take the Eagles because I think defensively they're going to play a great game and they're going to keep, they're going to limit full throw in the football and they're going to run it down the Falcons' throat. And we're going to be able to see how stout that Falcons defense really is because we weren't able to see anything with, against the Rams. But now with the Eagles, the Eagles are flying high. Let's see how that works out. I'm going to go with the Eagles. Patriots and the Titans. If the Patriots lose this game, even with all the drama that's going on between Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, it would make – I think that Bill Belichick would be leaving New England that same day if they lose this game. So I'm just going with the Patriots. I don't need – it's Tom Brady versus Mariota. Mariota's one tough man, all that good stuff. But the Patriots, I'm not going to bet against them. That, that'll that be foolish. Uh, just looking at history and everything that goes into it, the way they prepare, the game planning, the coaches versus the coach, like all that stuff going into it, I got to go Patriots. Um, Jaguars and the Steelers. This is very, very tough for me. And I know that you're probably going to say, what are you talking about? You know, it's the Steelers. The, if, if the Jaguars had anybody else other than Blake Bortles, I would pick the Jaguars outright. But honestly, a dead raccoon with no eyeballs is better than Blake Bortles. So I don't know what I'm doing. And, it, and this, has been, this has been really, really going crazy in my brain, bro. I'm trying to figure, like, yo, what is – the Jaguars' defense is going to do their job. The problem is Blake Bortles has to throw the football – He's going to have to throw the football because the Steelers' defense in the middle is no – like, they got a very, very good – they got they got a good front seven. Even without Shazier there, they got some guys that can play. Bud Dupree is still there. Cameron Haywood th – these guys are still there. Like, they, they didn't go anywhere. So, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Jacks to run the football. They're going to need Blake Bortles to do what he does. And trust me, he's not running around like he was doing against the Bills. So, I got to go Steelers here just for the fact that Blake Bortles is on the other side. Saints and the Vikings, this right here, man, it's a, it's a tough one for me. But I'm going to have to go with the Vikings. I, I just don't see how the Saints are going to beat the Vikings at home. I, with that defense, the way they're going to be playing, see, Case Keenum versus Drew Brees, that makes me want to pick the Saints. But the Saints are away. If they were playing at home with the Saints, if, if the Saints were home, I would go with the Saints. I got to take the home team here, even with Case Keenum at quarterback, just because I believe – that this defense is going to play Drew Brees a lot differently than the Panthers' defense played him. I think they're not going to make the same mistakes at the safety position with Harrison Smith and them boys. I don't think they're going to give up those deep plays. I think the defense will be able to contain Drew Brees. I really do. Um, and I'm just going based on home field advantage right now because I think the Saints could actually offensively overpower the Vikings. I just think that the Vikings are going to make that key stop when anybody, you know what I'm saying, like when another team can't make it, I think the Vikings is going to make a really, really hardcore key stop and pull this game out against the Saints. That's all I'm riding on is home field advantage. Obviously, we know Drew Brees is way better than Case He's He's having the same conversation with, with Case Keenum. Drew Brees is a better quarterback. But defensively, I think they're in a better position to win this game. Those are my predictions for the, uh, for the, for the divisional round. Hopefully, you enjoyed this recap and podcast. I'm going to see you guys and girls next week. Enjoy your holiday. Let's get it.